Hey guys, welcome to another day in the week. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Uh, it has been a fairly busy day for me so far, but I also have a lot of free time actually today, which is something that totally caught me off guard. So, I want to do something that I have not done before, and that is show you something that I'm fixing to make. And I'm sure you probably could see by the title what we're going to be doing today. But I thought it would be really cool to show you how I make my pin displays that I display my pins in. And I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, and I thought, well, this would be a really good way to show you how I display my pins uh, from Disney. Now, I've shown you guys before some of the pins on the wall in here. Uh, uh, they're not really displayed per se. They are just on a board uh, to to just be seen, but also for me to kind of um, look at. They're not really a part of a set. They're just things I like. But the ones that I've shown you before, and if you go back way back in some of my videos, you will see them. Uh, but I have displays of pins in my living room and a few in here as well, uh, where I just put them in a shadow box and display them. But I do actually do a few things to make them look a little different. Uh, I've been putting off putting together this Epcot 35 one for a while now. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that with you today. So I'm going to show you what I do and how I make them. All right, so this is the mess of stuff that I have to get into my pin box or my pin display, if you will. Um, this is all from the 35th celebration of Epcot. I've shown you these before, uh, all the pins and everything that's in this. Uh, if you wanna see those in more detail, definitely go take a look at the pin mail vlogs uh, back probably a month or two months or three months ago. Uh, I did a review of the whole set, uh, including these, which were the mystery set of Epcot 35th pins. Uh, and you'll see these in the display as well. I'm gonna try to get all of this into one display, but it may not happen because a lot of these, this is a lot of stuff. So, and my display box is not overly large. So we'll see if we can't get it all in there. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so first things first is I start with a picture frame or shadow box. This is a uh, shadow box that I picked up at the hobby store. Uh, this one is a 12 by 16 inch, uh, which you can see there in the bottom corner. Uh, this one retails for $19.99. I believe I got them when they were on sale. Uh, I think it was like half off. I don't know who the mom is uh, or the kids are, so don't really care about that. Uh, but I start with one of these. Uh, it depends on the size and how much. This one is the only one that they had in stock at the time. Uh, so I did pick this one up. I also pick up a piece of black, basically corrugated cardboard plastic uh, material. Uh, this one was $5.99. It is a pretty good sized piece. Uh, you can see the price tag down there at the bottom. It's upside down. Uh, but it's just a solid black piece of kind of like a corrugated cardboard. Uh, but it does have a bit of foam in the middle uh, with a matte finish. Um, sometimes I will get felt. Uh, to put in there as well but in this particular case I've discovered that this works just fine I will let you know it is thin so when you push your pins into it uh, the pin uh, backs will poke through the back a little uh, but being that that's gonna be on the wall and nobody's gonna see it I don't really care so much so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by taking the back off of the um, the frame and that is pretty simply done with removing some of these tabs. All right, once I've got all the tabs removed, I'm gonna pop out this back piece here. Well, so I said, there we go. a little bit of suction into it. I'm gonna pop out this back piece here. Just remove off the mom and dad. Don't really need that part. I'm gonna set this part aside for a moment because I don't need it at the moment. And so now I have this hard back. Now, this I can use to put with the, um, the pin backs to kind of put on the back if there's enough space. Uh, but the corrugated piece is actually pretty much the same thickness as the wood backing that comes with them. So typically I just leave this off. But I am gonna use it as a template to cut out my um, black corrugated.
All right, so this go round, it was a little more cumbersome because I use scissors and I normally use an X-Acto knife, uh, but I could not find my X-Acto knife for today. I don't know what I have done with it, but that's okay. So I've got it cut out um, and everything is measured out. I'm gonna take my frame back out and I'm simply just gonna pop it in there to make sure it fits, make sure I don't need to trim it up anywhere. Uh, I did mar up the edge a little bit, so it may require me to do a little finagling but it looks like it's gonna be a good fit. Uh, I may trim a little off the edges so that it fits a little bit better uh, because I will tell you working with these little tabs, uh, if they're not bent back just so, the little piece of cardboard or the uh, crafting item you use will not fit in there because it cannot get past the little spikes. So I'm probably gonna trim a little off the edge. Uh, the good thing is, is these frames, I don't know if you can tell, uh, in the shot here, but they do have a little bit of a lip along the edge. So if you under trim, that's okay too. All right, so I've gone in and I've retrimmed it a little bit. I'm gonna pop it back out of the container here. And now that that is done, I don't really need this part for a little while. So we're gonna move it out of the way again. Now comes the fun part, and that's figuring out how you're going to place the pins and the items you're gonna use in your display. Now, as I mentioned before, this is an Epcot 35th display that I'm working on. So I wanna make sure that, uh, you know, it displays all the great things that are about Epcot 35. Also, I wanna make sure that my uh, jumbo pin gets in the very center uh, because it is my piece that I was really looking forward to to putting into this display. And I'm sure there are a lot of pin collectors that are like, oh my gosh, don't remove it from the box. No, but I will save the box uh, for later use and it'll be put in its own place uh, just for safekeeping. Uh, but really and honestly, I'm not gonna sell this pin, which is now missing from the box. Uh, so it will probably always just remain in there. This pin, as you can tell, is quite large. It's pretty good size, the palm of my hand. Uh, and I think I've shown it to you before, but it does have the four pin backs uh, on there. And they are super sharp compared to the normal ones. Uh, so this one is definitely going to want to be somewhere in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you as I put them on here how I want them to go. I'm not going to push them down into the, the corrugated just yet because when you do, what happens is you end up with tons of little holes. Also, I need to flip my corrugated over uh, because that side had a crinkle on it and I couldn't remember. So we're going to line them up here and display them however you feel you like. Um, this is the easiest way I like doing it because I like to showcase um, all of the things. Now, a lot of these are uh, limited edition, such as this one here. This one is a limited edition, uh, 35. Normally, I do not display them with the back, the backer card itself. Uh, I tend to take them off of the backer card because I really and honestly don't really need to see the backer card. Uh, because I know, and if anybody asks, I can simply just say, oh yeah, well that's from Epcot's 35th. Uh, that's a limited edition pin. And I can tell you that this one, in particular, that I'm holding up right now, is a LE of 1,000. So there's only 1,000 of these pins. This one actually came from D23 Expo. Uh, I actually ordered that one online. Uh, but there are quite a few Epcot 35th ones here that are just rack pins uh, that'll be thrown into this mix as well. So I'm pulling them all off the card as we speak and you'll see them starting to pop out here. All right, so this set is probably not going to make it into the uh, collage. I decided that after I was going through, I just realized I'm missing one of them and I don't think I ever ordered one to replace it. Uh, and I also want to replace one of the ones that came with it. I did buy these while I was there. Uh, this one in particular for uh, Wonders of Life. As you can tell, looking at it on the screen, it looks near black. Uh, it is, you can see it there better. It does have the logo, but I think this one is a kind of a goof uh, because it does have too much lacquer on one side. So you really can't tell what it is unless you catch it in just the right light. So I think I'm gonna hold off on putting these into the set. Uh, and I will set those aside for another time. I'm also not gonna put uh, the pin lanyard into it, um, or the pin lane um, metal that goes at the bottom of the pin lanyard. I'm not gonna put that one in there. It's kind of big, 
Um, and I want to make sure that I be able to display everything clearly. I may actually use this one. I don't know. I may actually wear this on my lanyard next time I go. Um, as you guys know, I'm going to Disneyland. So it's a good possibility that I will uh, just use it when I go to Disneyland. Uh, as far as all the cards, I do keep all of the cards, or at least the ones that are of importance. Uh, for example, even if they're a stock card, this one's kind of a stock card. Uh, it's not anything limited edition, but I will hang on to it because it does have that uh, Epcot logo on it as well. Uh, now, but the basic uh, Disney Parks collections, it look, eh, sorry, it looks like this. I probably will not hold on to because you can get these a dime a dozen uh, anytime you buy a rack pin. So that's where we are so far. Uh, I keep all my pin backs. I have a little baggie uh, full of pin backs. And if you do pin trading, you have a ton of pin backs uh, that you keep stored around everywhere, I'm sure, just like me. All right, so what I did is I went into my sewing kit uh, and I have pins. I only have these type of pins, but what I thought I could do is, is because some of them are orange in color, that I could easily just pop them in here to hold it. Now more than likely, I'm gonna put it and tuck it underneath uh, one of these hoops so it's not as noticeable. Uh, so what I will do is just pin that in and then loop that over and then I'll come across here trying to figure out how that that hoop turns so that I can mimic them pretty much the same and that's sort of close so I may have to move my pins around just a little I'll get another orange pin out here and I know you probably can't see it because I can't even see it, but uh, that's that's on. Uh, and that'll be a good easy way to get these onto the display without having to uh, put pin pins into them. I just realized you could not see half of what I was just doing, uh, but that's okay. You'll see it in a minute. So I'm going to take my other pin here and I'm going to slide this board over so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can see now. So I'm going to take my other pin here and just put it in to the end here and where's my hoop there we go because so what I want to do is I don't really care if these are seen um, you're not gonna see them in the end product more than likely so I'm not too too concerned and if you hear any swearing or cussing it's because I've stabbed myself with a needle um, <laughs> so here is my last one let me, let's see if I can sneak it into here is there is a hoop on the end. I'm gonna see if I can't sneak it inside of there. Like so. And now it's the pin tip is conveniently hidden and tucked away. I'm gonna actually remove all of my pins. Uh, I'm gonna keep them in the order that they're gonna go on there just so I know. Uh, as you can see, I've rearranged some of them a little. God, I gotta be careful with that one. It, not only is that one heavy, but it also is very sharp and it hurts when you get stabbed with it. So there we go. So there you have it. I'm going to touch up that. Oh, you can't see it. Um, there you go. I'm going to uh, tuck up the top part as well. Uh, this top part right here. Uh, because when I display it, it starts to slide. So let's dig out one more orange pin. Close that up before I end up losing one and stabbing myself. <clears throat> and I'm going to go from the underside and just simply pin through it. Make sure I don't scar up the front by any means. And then in it goes. And now... I'm gonna see if you can see it here. I don't think you can see it because it's up, but it is full up at the moment. Let me see if I can rotate the camera. Hang tight for a second. There we go. So there is the full display. Ignore everything in my background. There's the full display. As you can see, it's pretty substantial. It's not going anywhere. Uh, and you do not see any of the pins. So let's get to pinning. All right, so now that I have my ribbon on there, I'm gonna start with 
the big one in the middle. And again, I'm not going to push them down yet. I want to make sure everything's where I want it uh, before I get it all done. I'm going to put this one back at the top. I had originally moved it down to the bottom, but I think I like it better at the top. And hopefully you can see all of these as I put them in. This one... Where did I have them? Oh, I had this one on the side. I had this one down here. I had this one up at the top. And the trifold on this side. So there we have it. So that's kind of roughly how the display is going to look. I kind of like the way this looks. Uh, if you like the way this looks, let me know in the comments down below uh, what you think of it. I'm going to rotate it so I can see it straight forward uh, because I had it rotated for you guys to be able to see it. Uh, I'm just going to make sure everything looks centered. And once I like the way it's positioned, which that looks good to me right there, and it doesn't have to be perfect, in it goes. So I eyeballed it. It's in position. And as you can see, the um, corrugated holds them really well. Um, they do swing a little if you have swingers or dangler pins. Uh, they will swing a little bit um, over time, especially if you move them or if you hit them. Um, but once they're in, I'm trying to line them up, sorry, there we go. Once they're in, you just line them up. And that one looks good. And they're in. So that is the pin display. I'm gonna rotate it again so you can see it. That's what it's gonna look like when it's done. I'll show you the back real quickly. Uh, hopefully none of them fall off or swing around. Uh, as you can see on the back, you cannot really see the pins coming through. Um, there are teeny tiny little two pin pricks on the back, but not enough to really hinder you from doing it this way. Um, because you're, you'll feel them if you pick it up, obviously, but you're not going to get like stabbed. It's not like it sticks through very, very far. So now I'm going to bring up my glass frame again, make sure I don't have any smudges in it. Most of the smudges on it are from the outside where the cats like to play on it while it was, uh, sitting up on the, the table. I'm going to make sure I get my frame turned the right way here because that has to go a specific way to hang in that direction. I've made that mistake before making these. I will make them, get them all ready, go to hang them, and it's upside down. So this works best to make sure and triple check. So I'm gonna simply take my piece. Hopefully it fits in there because I do have that lanyard on the edges. We're gonna lean it up and cross our fingers, everybody, that we don't lose anything, nothing falls off in this process. A lot of times the pins will fall off the the corrugated when you put it in and it looks pretty good I'm gonna adjust the top I'm gonna lay it down so you can see it I'm gonna adjust it again the 35th got caught when I put it up there so I just got to wiggle that down and we'll be good to go all right so this is the part that I hate and I'm gonna show you guys what happened so the the box looks pretty good ignore the smudges these are on the outside I haven't cleaned it yet so it looks pretty good. Everything looks where I want it to be. Nothing flopped around or got crazy. But in the adjustment, the pin popped out. So I now have to take it. This is the hard part about doing pin displays sometimes. I've got to undo this side and try to move that back over because I really don't want those pins to be seen. <clears throat> Mind you, it's orange, but I still would like for it not to be visible. So I'm going to take a quick second and repair that. All right, guys, so this is it. Once it's adjusted, now that it's standing upright, you do not see the pins uh, that are holding it in place. Uh, the 35th is up there proud and displayed as well. I really like how it's turned out. This is how I display mine. Typically, I don't have the lanyard. Normally, it's just pins in here, uh, and I typically do them in sets, but this one is the 35th anniversary Epcot pin set. The only thing that's missing, and I wanted to get it in here, was the mystery pin uh, collection from the 35th, but I'm missing one and I need to replace one of them. So those will go in their own little box separate. I really do like this set a lot and I cannot wait to get it on the wall uh, because it looks 
really good. I'm really impressed how it turned out, and this did not take very long at all. Uh, if you watch the video from start to end, honestly, it would have probably taken less time if I had not videoed. <laughs> uh, I could have probably got this done a lot quicker if I would not videoed any of this, um, because it really did not take that long at all to get it all put together. Again, very inexpensive way to display your pins if you have a collection you're proud of and you want to display uh, that you may or may not want just on a, a foam board uh, and you may want to do something a little more special for them or with them. Uh, and again, I am a huge Epcot person. I love Epcot, I love Figment. I'm a little upset about Guardians. We'll talk about that one other day. But this is the set that I really liked and I was really excited when I got the completed set. So this is how I do it. Uh, this is how I like to display special sets. Um, let me know in the comments down below if this is something you like. Uh, if this is something you would like to try. Again, really inexpensive. Like I said, I bought the frame on half price. It was normally $19.99. I think I got it for maybe $10. Um, the corrugated was $5-$6. Uh, but again, it was, I think, half price as well. Uh, I do buy them at Hobby Lobby. I'm not a big fan of the store too, too much. But uh, really and honestly, it's quick, easy, and cheap. So I go there. Uh, but all in all, really good display. And it's going to look really great on the wall. These shadow boxes, they do sell them. This one is a rustic pattern. Uh, it's kind of like a rustic cabin slash washed beach driftwood color uh, so that works best for me and my style of home and decor but they do have other options for you as well that you could possibly get again super quick project something easy to do and on a rainy day nothing else better than to play with some Disney pins and have a little magic all right guys well that's it for me today it's been a rainy day it's been a wet day but I got to do pins. I got to show you how I display my pins. Again, that is the, only, the way I display the sets and collections I really like uh, that are completed and I want to conserve, conserve, uh, reserve and set aside. Uh, and I have, I'm looking at them right now, four, five, six, seven displays like this similar uh, on my living room wall. And then in here in this room, I've showed it to you before. So if you wanna see the room tour, go back and look through my videos for that. Uh, but I have one, two, three, four boards in here. Uh, one of which is in a similar case, but it opens. Uh, and the others are just on foam boards and those are my traders. Also, if you're interested in trading, hit me up uh, on what some of my social media. Uh, Instagram, you can see some of the pins I have for trade and I would love to trade with you because I'd love to pin trade. So make sure you hit me up there if you want to trade. But that's today. The day is done. I'm going to call it over. I will see you guys on the other side. Till tomorrow.